Yeah, hello and welcome back to the case of the month of June 2018. Um, I hope you had a lovely start into the summer and enjoyed lots of sunshine like I did this weekend. So I hope I can distract you a little bit with, in my opinion, a very interesting case. Um, as always, my thanks go to our dental technicians, in this case to Derek, who's done a really great job um, with the crowns, as you'll see later on. Yeah, we test the limits of immediate implant placement and restoration on the same day and I hope I'll get some criticism for my bravery and everything went well in this case, but of course you'll never know how we look in 10 or 20 years. So let's see what we did with this case. This is the uh, initial situation, patient uh, introducing herself, coming from far, far away and wanted to have done as much as possible in one visit. So we did the examination and a couple of old amalgam fillings, a um, couple of old composite fillings which needed replacement or um, with, with uh, ceramic or even uh, ceramic partial crowns or even crowns and a few fillings. So what we always do, we uh, plan the case directly together with the patient um, in this case, replace the old amalgam fillings with composite fillings and uh, retreat the roots of the teeth to four and to six and uh, place new crowns on them and extract the two lateral incisors and place implants on the same day. So, after we've done all the fillings, the root canal treatments, the cleaning, the oral instruction of how to keep the teeth clean which we call the synoptic uh, treatment concept. So you do everything before you do surgery, all the fillings, all the root crown treatments, all the periodontal stuff uh, before you enter into surgery. After we've done all that, we uh, did a, a CBCT and evaluated the situation. As you can see, the situation is pretty dire. Uh, big cysts around the apex of uh, the lateral incisors. But if you look very, very closely, you can see that the situation is not as bad because you have a three wall defect. You have the mesial and the distal wall. And of course, you retain the palatal wall. So the situation is not as bad as it initially looks. Nonetheless, of course, you have a greater risk in this case than if you have no inflammation at all. But our procedure is that we try to do as much as possible in, in one visit to reduce the stress for the patients and we haven't had a single failure of these implants so far. But our, uh, we replaced maybe two or three hundred implants this way. So we discussed all the options with the patient. The patient was happy uh, to proceed. And uh, then we entered surgery. You see here the situation with both teeth still inside. And you can see the situation was slightly exaggerated in the x-ray. So in situ, the situation doesn't look as bad. So we took out the teeth. And of course, before you implant, you really need to very, very thoroughly clean um, the alveol and uh, the socket of the tooth. And uh, that's what we did. Irrigate a lot with the sodium chloride, 0.9%. And these are the teeth. You can see vertical fractures, uh, re root resorptions, um, the soft tissue nearly all around it and nearly no bone anymore. So these teeth deserve to be taken out. Then we place the implants and you can see the situation suddenly doesn't look as bad anymore. You have a control of the situation. So we took the impression of uh, the situation. And uh, placed two membranes in this case we used a T3 Zimmerbiomate implant with a certain connection and used OsseoGuard membranes, which stand for around six to eight months, pinned them to the bone with uh, titanium pins and uh, fixated them in this stage with, or at this stage with the healing caps. Yeah, then we augmented the situation with endobone which is of bovine origin, so pretty standard procedure. And then place the membranes into position 
and at the temporary produced at the same day, which needs around one and a half to two hours. Yeah, then we place the same time temporaries two hours after implant placement, and um, you will see this is the situation three months later. You can see with regards to the, the tissue situation, we haven't lost much tissue at all. So the situation is nearly as it was before. The papillas are still nearly as they were before. So this is a great advantage of this technique that you retain the anatomy. We took the color and not just with a, with, with a uh, forceps flash or in flash, but we always, always take the color as well with a polarization filter. So the technician really sees the value and the who of the color of the teeth and uh, has a much clearer picture, more information to get the color right. So and then we always take digital impression nowadays. Um, and here you can see then the work. We don't do any stone plaster models anymore. anymore. We always use uh, printed models because we have the digital procedure, um, which is much cleaner uh, in our lab. And of course, um, you have to be very aware where you print your models and with which accuracy they print it. The accuracy can vary between 10 microns and 50 to 60 microns. So please be aware where you print your models and which companies you use. And yeah, then we go, I think it's a very beautiful work, very simple, but still very beautiful work. This is uh, two, two, five and two, six or two, four and two, six are made of Emacs, uh, fully anatomical and just uh, glazed and colored. And the front teeth are um, zirconium dioxide, solid FX it's called, and just uh, buckly veneered or label the veneered with field specific ceramic. You can hear that's the situation color wise completely okay. And you can't really see a big difference between the natural dentition and our implant teeth. This is directly after placement, so our crowns are slightly darker, but they will have the same color like three, four hours later. Of course, we filled the uh, um, wedge shape defects uh, to make the thing, the dentition more aesthetically pleasing, but you can still see that the patient needs a little bit of instruction in oral hygiene. And you can see a little bit buildup of calculus or tartar in the lower front, but I think that's something we can deal with any stage. And then one year after placement, uh, we took another x-ray to make sure that the situation is stable. You can see the cysts are nearly all gone. The remineralization process has nearly been completed. You can still see some areas which are a little bit darker where still some minerals are missing. But we're very confident that within one or two years, the situation will be completely okay. So you can see it was worth for this patient taking the risk, doing everything in one day, not waiting too long, and trying to retain as much as possible of the anatomy. Yeah, thank you very much for your kind attention, and I hope you enjoyed this small case. Thank you very much, and yeah, have a lovely summer, and see you in July. Bye-bye.